Hey everyone, this week we're going to be doing some urban nighttime photography and I'm going to be sharing my first impressions of the Google Pixel 7 Pro phone camera. So recently I upgraded my phone. I used to have a Google Pixel 4, I've now got the Google Pixel 7 Pro. And from time to time I like to come out to town and do some urban nighttime photography. I've done a video before when I was doing that. I turned some images into a neo-noir style. So I'll put a link up top to that one. And I'm going to be doing something similar today, but obviously I'll be looking at the Google Pixel 7 Pro. So first of all, this is not a review of the phone itself. If you're looking for a general review of the phone, this is not the video for it. But I am going to be looking specifically at the camera and potentially any other hardware or software features which might impact on using the camera. So I'm going to head into town now, we'll get some shots and I'll talk a little bit more about the phone. So this phone has got three cameras, well four if you include the front facing one, but you've got three primary ones which you're going to use most of the time for your photography. So we've got a 50 megapixel main lens, a 12 megapixel wide angle lens and a 48 megapixel five times telephoto lens. And if you use any kind of range between one times and five times zoom, it's going to use a combination of the main lens and the wide angle lens and it'll use some clever algorithms inside to blend those together and create one image. If you've got anything over 10 times zoom, it's going to use a combination of the telephoto and the other two lenses. But it uses some really clever algorithms to upscale those images because it kind of crops in and then upscales. And I've not tested that out yet, but apparently it's really good. You can't tell it's been cropped and then upscaled. The size of the phone is a little bit bigger than the regular Google Pixel 7 and it's also bigger than my old Google Pixel 4 as well but not much and it's still really easy to handle and it'll fit in your pocket nice and easily and if you're doing street photography or something like that it's fairly inconspicuous and you're not going to stand out. It's also worth noting that I've got this set to capture images in RAW so it'll capture RAW and JPEG. It'll use a bit more storage that way but you can edit those on your phone or on your computer later as well. It's really cold this evening, but luckily I've got my Valorette photography gloves. So these are great because it allows you to wear the gloves but flick back the index finger and thumb so that you can carry on using your camera, or in my case, my phone.
One of the things I've noticed compared to my Pixel 4 is that the night sight mode is much quicker on this phone. You only press it for a second or so and you get a really nice sharp image in really low light. Also, apparently the video stabilisation technology has been introduced into the photography side of things as well. So that really helps with tracking, especially at the telephoto end. Previously, that's really difficult for the processor to handle tracking subjects at such long telephoto distances. But with the Tensor G2 processor in this phone, it handles it really easily, so that's great. So we've got a really dark, dingy alley here, but I'm going to get a shot using the night sight mode and you'll see it only takes around about three seconds to get a really nice sharp shot, even handheld. I'm really keen to try out the long exposure mode. So I'm up on this bridge looking over this road here and I want to try and get the cars and get those light beams, get the light trails as the cars pass by. So we'll see how it performs for that. Okay, I think I've got some images I can use now. So we'll get home, I'll get those on the computer, we'll have a look at the quality, and I'll also talk about any other features or anything that I missed. So I'll see you back there. So with that last image there, it's great to be able to get the long exposures with your phone. It's not as good as using a DSLR or a mirrorless, certainly not as good as using my Z7, but if all you have with you is your phone, it's really great to be able to capture those. And one thing I should point out is that it doesn't capture those images in RAW. You'll only get the JPEGs when using the motion setting for the long exposures. It was great just getting out tonight and having to walk around and capturing those shots. I did use all of the lenses and they all worked great. I didn't show any earlier in the video from the wide angle lens, mainly because I didn't get a good shot. But I'll throw one up now and not the best image, but at least you can see what that looks like. If you're serious about photography, you're probably not going to be using the front-facing camera, but it is worth noting that it's 10.8 megapixels, and the cool thing with it is if you're a vlogger, you can record through the front-facing camera while simultaneously recording through one of the back cameras. So that's good if you want to record yourself whilst also capturing your subject. And the video specs are up to something like 4K at 60 frames per second, I think. So very good, as you would imagine, and I'm sure I'll be using this with my videos at some point. So on initial inspection, the downsides are that A, you can't control your settings. So shutter speed, aperture, ISO, you can't control any of that still with the Pixel phones. And secondly, your images come out at a lower megapixel count than the cameras are rated at. So even though you've got the 50 megapixel, 12 megapixel and 48 megapixel lenses on the back, your images are going to come out at 12.5 megapixels. And that's, I think, something to do with pixel binning. So I'm not going to go into that now, A, because I haven't got time, B, I don't know enough about it yet, <laughs> but at some point I will probably do a full review of this and I'll go out in more balanced conditions. I mean, it was great going out in the dark tonight, it was a good test for the phone, but I think I need to test it in different light and I'll also show a wider range of features and then I can talk a little bit more about the pixel binning and things like that as well. But overall, Generally, I'm really impressed with all the cameras on this phone and it's a big upgrade to my Pixel 4. So that's almost it for another video. Big thanks for watching. If you have enjoyed it or if you found it useful, just give me a thumbs up down there. And if you watch every week, I really do appreciate it. Thanks a lot, everyone. If you're new to the channel, though, and you're not yet subscribed and you'd like to do so, you can also click down there on the big red button. 
or over here on this picture of me. That way you'll keep up to date with everything I'm doing each and every week. There's a new video every Sunday morning at 10am UK time. So I hope you'll join me next week for the next one. But until then, thanks a lot everyone and bye for now.